Hi, yeah. welcome to Number Club. This is Year One Pure, Chapter Two, Lesson Five, and today we're looking at discriminant. So let's get cracking. So, what is the discriminant? Well, we've seen it before. You've actually seen it in um, the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is this thing here: uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac, all over two a. And you'll know that there are certain times where this does work and certain times where it doesn't work. So if, for instance, we tried um, x squared plus 1x plus 100, for example, I know that this is not going to have any solutions. If I tried it out, I'll get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 lots of 1 lots of 100 all over 2 lots of 1. Now this is fine, this is fine, but this square root, you end up with plus or minus the square root of one subtract 400, so negative 399. And you can try and put that into your calculator if you want to, but your calculator will tell you that you've got an error. There are no real numbers that multiply together to create negative 399. Okay, there are no real numbers, um, there are no real numbers that square, sorry, to create negative 399. Positive 399, fine, no problem. But no numbers that square to create negative 399. No real numbers. So we know a little bit about the discriminant. The discriminant is in here, it's inside the root. And it controls whether you do or you don't get solutions. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Okay, now when that is less than zero, when it's negative, you're going to get an error. And that error is saying that there are no roots or no solutions. You'll use those words interchangeably, okay? So we get no real roots or no real solutions. Now the real thing, I mentioned it in a previous um, video, basically that just means treated as you know it. Um, there are other sets of numbers called imaginary numbers. You don't need to know anything about them just yet. Um, and certainly it's not part of this part of the course. So no real roots or no roots, it's interchangeable. But most of the time you'll see no real roots. Now, if b squared minus 4ac was equal to zero, exactly equal to zero, then your quadratic formula would look like this. x equals negative b plus or minus zero over 2a, which means that x equals negative b over 2a. There's only one of those. There's only one solution to that. Plus or minus zero means that nothing's going to change. And so in this case, you get one real root. OK, and for b squared minus 4ac being greater than zero, you get two real roots. Now, I should mention that one real root is sometimes called two equal roots. And this is sometimes called two distinct real roots. OK, now ways that this can look. A U-shaped quadratic could have no real roots by looking like that, or it could have no real roots by looking like that. OK, um, U-shaped, N-shaped. OK, um, for one real root, you could have something that looks a bit like just tapping and touching and turning away. OK and you could have that one there and for two you can have something that looks like that you can have something that looks like that okay now the trick with the discriminant is that um you read really often going to um graph it and you have to be able to graph quadratics pretty well if you can't graph quadratics you need to look back onto the previous um videos to try and get a bit more of a hint about how to do it but let's get cracking shall we um this question says, find the set of values of k for which f of x has two equal roots. Um, what about if it has two distinct roots? What about if it has no real roots? Now, these three questions, a, b, and c, all pretty much start the exact same way. You find your discriminant. Whenever a question says something about two equal roots, or two solutions, or two distinct roots, or two distinct solutions, or no real roots, you should be thinking discriminant straight away. Discriminant is used a lot. So b squared minus 4ac. Now, in this case, b is k, so we get k squared minus 4 lots of 1, lots of 16. Okay, so k squared 
minus 64. Now, don't worry about the roots part. Try to get it into something that you might be able to graph. Now, we know that k squared minus 64 is going to have a crossing point negative 64. It's going to be symmetrical because there's no b coefficient. If you wanted to um, use the difference of two squares on it, you'll get that. Okay. Always graph your discriminant, even if it comes out as a linear. In this case, it doesn't, but sometimes it will do. So you get negative 8 as a root from this from this bracket, and you get positive 8 as a root from this bracket. And we also get negative 64 being its y-intercept. So we're graphing not the original graph, not f of x. We're graphing the discriminant here. Okay, This is the discriminant graph. So when is it that the discriminant is greater than zero? Well, the discriminant is this graph, and it is greater than zero in this region here, which is from there upwards and from there upwards as well. Okay, Two equal roots will be smack bang on the x-axis, and no roots at all will be less than. Okay, less than the x-axis. So when we've got two equal roots, they are exactly, um, two equal roots, they are exactly on here. Two equal roots is almost like one solution. Okay, they are exactly on here. So we know that that happens when k equals 8 and when k equals negative 8. Let's try those out if you want to. If you've got um, x squared plus 8x plus 16, We've got b squared, which is 64, minus 4, lots of 1, lots of 16, which is equal to 0. The discriminant is 0. Okay. Um, you could, if you wanted to, mess around with that and try to factorise it or whatever else. I don't think it factorises that one, though. Um, the, uh, the two distinct roots. Now, two distinct roots happen when your discriminant is greater than 0. Now, this is my discriminant curve. It is greater than 0. So we go in and we get an output that is greater than zero when we're above the x-axis. So that happens in two different places. That happens when k is less than negative 8 or k is greater than 8. Okay. When it's less than negative 8, we plug something in and we get out something positive. When it's greater than 8, we plug something in and we get out something positive. So those are where you've got two distinct roots. So for example, if k was 10, we'd get two distinct roots. If k was equal to 10, try k equals 10, we'd get x squared plus 10x plus 16, which would be k plus uh, x plus 2, x plus 8. Two real solutions, okay? Two distinct real solutions. No real roots will be when is the discriminant less than 0, and it's less than 0 within here. Okay, in that section there. And that is when k is between negative 8 and 8. Not equal to either of them. If it was greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you'd have, um, you'd have two equal roots at those points. But we've got in between, so directly in between. And you must always graph your discriminant. Let's move on. So g of x equals 2x squared plus 7x plus k. Give the value of k such that there are two real roots, two equal roots, no roots. So give the value of k such that this happens. So first off, let's get our discriminant graph sorted. We've got b squared minus 4ac. Now that's going to be 49 minus 4, lots of 2, lots of k. Okay. Um, that was b squared, 7 squared is 49. So we get 49 minus 8. K. Okay, so let's graph that. Okay, we've got this, um, and we can say, well, this is going to be 49. We're going this way here, so we've got 49 here, and K is going in. Okay, um, we don't know what this solution is just yet. Okay, so let's let this thing equal zero to find out what it is. So we get 49 equals 8K, 49 over 8 equals K. So there we go, we've got 49 over 8. Okay, just let it equal 0, find out what goes into this to produce a 0. So we've got greater than 0, equal to 0, and less than 0. So in this case, the discriminant is a linear. It's fine, always graph it though. Two real roots will happen when you've got something greater than 0. So it will be when k is 
less than 49 over 8. Because when k is less than 49 over 8, we've got to be heading up to get to the line. So it will be when k is less than 49 over 8. Two equal roots, one solution sometimes that's called, okay, is exactly when k is equal to 49 over 8. And no roots will be when k is greater than 49 over 8 because we get a negative for our discriminant. Remember, this line represents our discriminant. So we've got k being greater than 49 over 8. Okay, nice and easy, but you must graph that discriminant. Let's move on. H of x equals kx squared plus kx plus 5. Now, this is going to be more difficult because k appears more than once. So let's crack on again. We've got b squared minus 4ac. That's k squared minus 4, lots of k, lots of 5, k, okay, which is k squared minus 20k. We need to find out when does that equal 0 so that we can start to graph it. Well, that equals 0 when we've got k, lots of k minus 20. So it's when k equals 20, uh, 0 and k equals 20. So we've got, it's u-shaped by the way because of this. It's always going to be because b squared. Um, so we've got 0 and we've got 20. So we've got 20 up here. Okay, there's the graph of my discriminant. So you're starting to see the pattern probably. b squared minus 4ac. Substitute the stuff in. Let it equal 0. Find the solutions and graph it. Okay, when is it greater than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero? So we've got two distinct roots is when we're greater than zero. So that will be when k is greater than 20, k is less than zero. You must never, ever, ever try to get those to be one inequality. There's no such number that's greater than 20, but also less than zero. Okay, that is two separate parts, uh, two separate inequalities. There's no number that does that. And really, a good rule of thumb is, if there's two separate sections, there two should be two separate inequalities. Okay? When are the two, two equal roots? Well, that's when b squared minus 4 ac equals 0. That'll be when k equals 0, or k equals 20. And when are the no real roots? It's in this section here, isn't it? Okay? Where k is between 0 and 20. Okay, not too bad. Um, but remember, you must graph it. So you should be getting into the pattern, b squared minus 4ac. Substitute things in, let it equal zero, solve it, graph it, then use those things. Okay, the discriminant part, this part about the roots, don't get bogged down in that. Just deal with that bit first. All right, let's try another one. a of x equals x squared plus 2x plus k minus 2. Now, this type of question is really, really, really common. We know that a equals 1. We know that b equals 2, but c is anything that doesn't have a coefficient of x, okay? Anything that's a constant. Now, in this case, c is k minus 2. Okay, so let's get cracking. We've got b squared minus 4ac. Substitute those things in, same thing as usual. You can let it equal 0 straight away if you want. We've got 4 squared minus 4, lots of 1, lots of k minus 2. 0, that would be 16 minus 4k plus 8 equals 0, negative 4k plus 24 equals 0. Okay, not too bad so far. Now we need to find out the solutions for this, so I'm going to divide through by negative 4 because why not? Um, in fact, actually, be really careful with dividing through by negative 4. You want to be really cautious about that. But we're going to do that anyway. So we've got um, k equals um, negative 4k equals negative 24. So k equals 6. So there we've got 6. OK. Um, now, our discriminant line, the thing that equals 0, was, was this thing here. You can also, if you want to, um, you can also, if you want to, cancel out the negatives. Now, so what happens with, with this type of line is because you've been cancelling out negatives, you might be a bit puzzled about whether you've got something that should have been drawn like that or something that should have been drawn like that. And it's dead easy to deal with this. We know the two real roots thing is that k equals 6. That's fine. We know that the two distinct roots thing is going to be k somehow related to either greater than or less than 6. Okay. Try k being 10. 
substituted in here, what happens? Well, we get negative 40 plus 24, which would be negative 16. So k being 10 doesn't produce any roots. Okay, because you get negative 16, which would be the discriminant being negative. So in this case, k has got to be less than 6, and k has got to be greater than 6 for the no real roots section. Okay, in actual fact, the graph should have looked like that, and you should really use this. Okay, you should have used that where this is 24 and you've got a negative um, gradient. All right, sometimes people can get a little bit puzzled with that and they can they can go with 4K minus 24 equals zero, right? That doesn't really work the exact same way. Just take it as it comes, really. Um, but the best thing that you can do is just substitute something in, try it out. All right, moving on. This is an exam question, and this is a common type of exam question. I'm going to pause so that you can have a little look at it. It might be a little bit of a leap to figure this one out because you need a bit more practice before you try something as difficult as this. But I'll pause and let you have a crack at it. Okay, let's get moving then. So, um, A equals 1. A equals 1. B equals, um, it's negative of K plus 8. Have a think, how's that going to really do anything? It's a bit of a weird one. Um, and C is equal to 8K plus 1. Okay, um, so the discriminant is going to be B squared minus 4AC, which is going to be negative of K plus 8 squared minus 4, lots of 1, lots of 8K plus 1. Okay, and the discriminant is going to be, well, the negative is not going to matter, it's going to, it's going to, uh, multiply out we've become a positive so we get k squared plus 16k plus 64 minus four eights which is 32k minus four ones which is minus four and you're going to get k squared minus 16k plus 60. okay give your answer as a simplified quadratic job done if the equation f of x has two equal roots so that is when is the dis when is it that you've got um, when is it that you've got two equal solutions? So when is it that the discriminant is equal to zero? Okay, so we've got k squared minus 16 plus 60. I like to graph the discriminant, so I'm going to let the thing equal to zero. I'm going to factor it. We get k minus 10, k minus 6 equals zero. So k equals 10 and k equals 6. They're actually already the answer for that. Okay. Um, you could if you want to graph it as well. 6. 10 you get something that looks like that there okay um so the possible values of k are k equals 10 and k equals 6. all right show that when k equals 8 f of x is greater than 0 for all values of x so when k equals 8 so we've got if k equals 8 we can substitute into here okay we could also say, well, if k equals 8, there are no solutions, okay? And if k equals 8 and there are no solutions, and the fact that this thing is, is U-shaped, you're going to end up with something that looks either like that or like that. Okay, we don't know just yet. We could, if you want, substitute it into here and see what happens with the discriminant, if you want to, okay? But looking at it, it's not overly complicated, this one. So let's take a look. So we've got f of... Eight, uh, f of x, pardon me, when k equals 8. So we have x squared minus 16x plus 65. So we get x squared minus 16x plus 65. b squared minus 4ac. So we've got 16, 16 is not an easy one. I think it's 256. So 16 times 16 is yeah, 256. Okay, so we get 256 minus 4 lots of 1 lots of 65. Okay, and so you get 4 times 65, which is equal to 260. 256 minus 260 equals negative 4. So as the discriminant is negative, No solutions exist. 
Now that's fine, but it still could mean that we've got something that looks like that. So you still need to say, as the coefficient to x squared is greater than zero, we have, and you're allowed to say a u-shaped, people know what that means, quadratic. Therefore, um, f of x is greater than zero for all x, okay, if k equals eight. All right, job done. Thanks very much for watching. Visit numberclub.org to find more videos and tasks just like this one. Um, hopefully you can get a little bit of practice on discriminant because it's really, really, really important. It's extremely important that you practice this one. Thanks very much.